Where does our electricity come from? Well, most of our electricity comes from power plants that use generators to generate our electricity. How do the generators create electricity? Well, they spin electromagnets near coils of wire. Wait, how does that work? And how did anyone figure that out in the first place? Well, I'll tell you in the video. Ready? Let's go. Electricity, 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 electricity. It all started in 1832. That's when Michael Faraday wrote a paper about the many ways to create or induce electricity with magnets. Faraday wrote that moving a magnet into or out of a coil would create bursts of current and spinning a copper disc near a magnet made a constant but very weak current. A French instrument maker with the nearly unpronounceable name of Hippotly Pixie read Faraday's paper and combined their features into one single machine where he spun a U-shaped magnet near coils of wire. When Pixie spun the magnet, an interesting thing occurred. The current would go one way, and then half a turn later, the current would swing back the other way. By spinning the magnet faster, he could get more current, but also make the current swing back and forth faster. Pixie created alternating current, or AC. Now at the time, that seemed like a negative result. He went to France's leading electrician, a man named Andre Ampere, who suggested he could fix this problem with a funny device we call a commutator. The commutator had brushes that connected to the coils so that sometimes the wires were connected one way and sometimes they were connected the opposite way. The result of all this is that it changed the alternating current into a current that pulsed but only went in one direction. Even with the commutator, this generator was not useful for telegraphs as the signal was too bouncy. Poor Pixie died in an accident two years later at age 26, and as far as we know, never made a dime off of his invention. Not much of importance happened for another 16 years, until a Brussels professor named Floris Nolet made a generator with more and more coils, eventually creating a behemoth machine with 40 magnets and 16 coils that he called the Alliance, that could produce around 50 volts of potential. At the time, the only electrical lamp was called an arc lamp and was made with creating a very bright spark between carbon rods. The Alliance machine would light up an arc lamp, but it was not practical for commercial use because the commutator would spark and break with all those brushes rubbing against the rapidly spinning machine. After seven years and basically as a random act of frustration, they tried using it without the commutator at all. They found to their shock that the alternating current would light up an arc lamp. This was the first instance of using the current that went back and forth, alternating or AC instead of forcing the current to be in one direction, direct current or DC. This was the first use of AC to create light. The most important invention in generators happened around this time and it has to do with the electromagnet. Way back in 1831, an American scientist named Joseph Henry experimentally demonstrated that you can make the strongest magnet per weight with a simple battery by wrapping insulated wire tightly around the metal core and putting current in that wire. In the 1850s, two men said they independently thought of using electromagnets in their generator. Samuel Varley was a 35-year-old English telegraph operator and disciple of Michael Faraday who had been playing with generators for fun on his own since he was 17 years old. In 1856, he invented a generator with electromagnets, although it took him 10 years to file for a patent. Varley might have been the first, but he was mostly ignored as he was not well connected and he had a bitter falling out with his older brother Cromwell Varley, who was well connected and apparently worked to obscure his younger brother's accomplishments. Another Englishman named Henry Wilde was well connected and his siblings didn't work against him. In 1864, he wrote about how he used electromagnets to create a generator, also why he thought of it. Wilde stated that since electromagnets demonstrated that electricity could produce a very strong magnet, and generators demonstrated that magnets and spinning could produce a lot of electricity, 
it seemed logical to basically nestle these effects. His idea was to use a generator with magnets to create electricity and then use that electricity to make electromagnets to generate even more electricity. Wilde found his results to be most splendid. He had ecstatic descriptions of how his compound generator would produce great amounts of electricity that could produce brilliant lights or even melt metal bars. Notice you can't get something for nothing. It will produce more electricity, but is also correspondingly harder to rotate. Wilde's paper was a hit. And two other scientists credited his work with giving them the idea of creating a generator with electromagnets powered by the generator itself. The idea is to siphon some of the electricity produced by the generator back into the wires of the electromagnets so that the current that the generator produces creates the magnetism. This is called self-excitation. If you just spin wires near other wires, you don't generate any electricity. You need some magnetism to kickstart it. Both men found that you could either kickstart it by using a little bit of electricity from a battery, or even rubbing it with a magnet, or even using the magnetic field of the Earth. So in other words, electromagnets are given a little magnetism, and then the coils are spun near these weak magnets. This causes current to be induced in the coil. Some of this current is then siphoned off to the electromagnet, increasing its magnetism. This causes more current to be induced in the coil to be fed back to the electromagnet. This feedback loop is what makes these generators so very powerful. Self-excitation and electromagnets was the key to making powerful generators to light up whole cities with electricity. One of the men to discover self-excitation in 1866 was a German scientist named Werner von Siemens. Siemens had started a company 20 years earlier called Siemens & Halski to manufacture long-distance telegraph lines in Germany. Siemens became the first company to manufacture self-excited generators, which they called dynamos, for the Greek word for power, dynamis, a name used for most DC generators for the next 50 years. Just to give credit where it was due, Samuel Varley, the guy with the pissed off brother discovered self-excitation in the 1850s and even patented it before either Siemens or the other scientist Wheatstone wrote about it. However, he was mostly ignored by the scientific community at the time. With dynamos, suddenly companies were springing up all over to produce electricity, to light up cities and even homes. However, most people used a com commutator to make pulse DC current instead of AC current. Why? Well, there was the mistaken belief that AC was more dangerous than DC. Also, you couldn't use self-excitation with the AC because the electromagnets needed direct current. So you needed a side exciter like Wild used. Siemens himself said that, quote, nothing whatsoever in alternating current. It is pure humbug. In the late 1800s, there were only a few brave visionaries who wanted to use AC. One of those visionaries was named Nikola Tesla. In 1887, Tesla invented what is called a multi-phase AC generator and a corresponding multi-phase AC motor. In this system, you spin multiple separate coils around the electromagnets. The idea is that the different coils get the same alternating current, but the current is out of step with each other. The alternating current is then transmitted over more wires, but with significantly more power. For example, the three-phase motor needs three wires instead of the traditional two, however, has three times the power. In addition, multi-phase current can be used to make stronger motors, as each coil pushes the motor at different phases. For that reason, we use three-phase generators in our power plants today. After the invention of the diode, which is a one-way switch, we had a way of producing AC and using self-excitation, which is what we do today. This is how we mostly generate electricity. Think of a power plant. Coal plants burn coal and then have the steam spin electromagnets near coils of wire. Nuclear plants use nuclear reactions to heat water so that the steam will spin electromagnets near coils of wire. Dams block a river and then have the pressurized water 
spin electromagnets near coils of wire. Windmills use wind to spin electromagnets near coils of wire. They almost all work this way. So this is where electricity comes from. Thanks for watching my video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up. If you liked it, you might like the previous one on how Faraday discovered induction in the first place. I will also make a video about Edison and Tesla and Westinghouse and the whole fight over AC and DC. But first I want to tell you one of my favorite stories in the history of electricity, the invention of the telephone. It's a story about a shy teacher for deaf students and how his love of his deaf student inspired him to invent the telephone. That story is next time on The Secret History of Electricity. Electricity, electricity, electricity.